us to come and join us on Sunday. We don't require any kinds of things for someone to come through the opening doors. But we also don't consider that every single person who shows up here on a Sunday morning is part of the church. We don't make a huge deal about membership around here, requirements for membership and things like that. Just because on the surface, we don't want the Sunday morning to be all about who's in and who's out. But the bottom line is there's a group of people that you could call the church, Lafayette Community Church, and there's another group of people that you could call the attenders at Lafayette Community Church. And Paul would draw the lines this way. Those who are part of the church, he assumes, have been baptized and have made a decision to follow God in obedience. If that's not true for you, Romans 6 does not apply to you. Romans 1 through 5, you can learn all you want about Romans 1 through 5, but you hit Romans 6, and all of a sudden it doesn't apply to you. Because the basis of Paul's argument is for those people who have been united with Christ and have chosen to obey him. And he uses baptism and this commitment of obedience to draw that to the surface. How can Paul be so convinced that these strangers he's never met have these two things true for them? You know how? It's because Jesus commanded it. Way back, I mentioned this earlier, but the last words Jesus said to his disciples recorded in Matthew, we're going to be up on the screen here. Jesus says this, go into all the world, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I've commanded you. When Jesus talks about what it means to be a follower of his, when he talks about what it means to be a disciple, one who's becoming like Jesus, he uses these two exact same things. He says baptism and obedience. Paul uses baptism and obedience in Romans 6 because Jesus used baptism and obedience in Matthew 28. And Paul says, listen, if you're part of the church, if you're a follower of Jesus, these things are expected. Romans 6 doesn't apply to you unless these things apply to you. I have to make a deal of it today because we live in a society that has forgotten Matthew 28, even more so Romans chapter 6. And we don't know what it really means to be part of the church, to be part of those people who follow Jesus. Paul assumes that to be true. So maybe today that's where you are. And you need to say, which one of these am I going to do first? Am I going to make the commitment to obedience? Am I going to get baptized? Or am I going to do both of them right at the same time? Make that decision for yourself. Maybe that's where you are. But if you have done those things, if you have walked through baptism and you have made the commitment of obedience, then Romans 6 applies to you. And then Paul's point in Romans 6 applies to you, that God has changed who you are so that you now change how you live. I wrote it this way. The people, the, the thing he expects to be true of all Christians are that they join who they are to how they live. That's the last thing on your paper. They join who they are to how they live. Now, all of this can be really challenging. All of this can make us feel guilty and make us say, am I able to measure up? And so there are two verses that I skipped as we were reading through. I skipped them because I wanted to save them for now so that they might be an encouragement to you. Romans 6 is in two sections. And the final verse of each section provides encouragement for us. Look at the last verse of the chapter. Verse 23 says this. For the wages of sin is death, the bad news. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Paul ends Romans 6 with a simple reminder that, listen, yes, you need to change how you live. But eternal life is still a gift. God just gives it to those who by faith receive it. Eternal life is still a gift. Don't feel burdened that you need to earn eternal life. Feel grateful that you have eternal life. And as people who have been raised from the dead, who have life on the other side of death, walk out in this new life and experience it. Be encouraged by it. Don't be burdened by it. And there's one other thing he says, and that's in verse 14 at the end of the first section. He says, For sin shall no longer be your master because you are not under law but under grace. 
Sin shall no longer be your master because you're not under law, you're under grace. When I was younger, I took this as a command. I took this as a challenge. Don't let sin be your master. But the thing is, Paul already told us that. He already told us that we should not let sin be our master. Here in this verse, he says it differently. He says, it won't be your master. It shall not be your master. See, I think we should read this as a promise. Just as he ended the second half of Romans 6 with a promise, I think we should read this, this verse as a promise. It's not that God says, now you've got to work harder. He says this. Simply put, sin shall no longer be your master. Claim that as a promise. As people under grace, claim that as a promise. God has changed who you are, so change how you live. I want to conclude our time with something I'm calling the Romans 6 Manifesto. And this is a statement of summary of everything Romans 6 teaches us, combined with a commitment of what it means for me. In a moment, I'm going to ask you all to read this out loud with me when we get to it. I'm going to ask you all to read it out loud with me and If you are one of those people that you can't say that the prerequisites of Romans 6 are true in your life, you've never been through baptism, you've never made the commitment of obedience, if you can say those prerequisites are not true for you, then you can go ahead and read this, but uh, just to add the noise to the room and be loud and everything. But I want you to know that these words can't be true for you unless you walk through the prerequisites of Romans 6. However, for those of us who have, for those of you who have, Read through this manifesto as a joyous, glorious statement of conviction, commitment, and recognition that God has done more for you than you could ever do for God, but still we will do what he asks us to do. This is what it says. Because of Jesus, I am a dead, resurrected instrument of righteousness. I have offered myself to God, and I have been freed from sin. This is not just wishful thinking. This is who I am. This is what I've been given, and this is how I roll. Can you handle it? We're going to read through this whole thing out loud. I want it to be a claim from your heart of what's true for you and what will be true for you. Let's read it out loud. Because of Jesus, I am a dead, resurrected instrument of righteousness. I have offered myself to God, and I have been freed from sin. This is not just wishful thinking. This is who I am. This is what I've been given. And this is how I roll. I don't know if you talk like that in your daily life. I certainly don't, but I thought it was fun. Let's do it one more time. Because of Jesus, I am a dead, resurrected instrument of righteousness. I have offered myself to God, and I have been freed from sin. This is not just wishful thinking. This is who I am. This is what I've been given. And this is how I roll. God has given you the gift of righteousness. He has placed you in a state of grace. He has promised eternal life to you. So walk in it. Live it out. And enjoy the glorious place of being there. Exactly where God wants you to be. I'm going to invite you to enter into a time of reflection. The band is going to sing a song for us. And while Lori sings, I want you to jot down the words of this manifesto on the back side of your note sheet. Carry it with you. And maybe this can be part of the process of us becoming the people God has already made us to be. Enter into a time of reflection, you and God. Thank you for listening to this message from Lafayette Community Church. We believe that God has a full and fulfilling life in store for you, and we want to help you live it. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me, Pastor Jeff, through the web form at lafayettecommunitychurch.com. And as always, I encourage you to plug into a solid, God-honoring community wherever you may be. Life is a journey, and no one should ever walk alone.